Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set your date filters without explicitly setting them in the filter pane or using the relative date slicer. Stay tuned. Okay, so what's all this mumbo jumbo about dates and filters and stuff like that? Well, I was on with the customer recently and they had a really interesting scenario and I wasn't gonna do a video about it and I showed Adam, he was like, you gotta do a video on this. I was like, okay, okay. But let me, let me explain, let me explain what I'm talking about. So basically they had their, you know, their actual sales on the line graph and then they had that and they were stored in one table and then they had the projected sales stored in another table and both of them were maintained and refreshed once a month and what they wanted to do was based on the last day that was in the actual sales the last date that was in the actual sales table they wanted to look at data comparing this year and last year 12 months back and then they also wanted to add another point on the graph looking at projected sales 12 months ahead all right something like that all right and so what he was doing was he was trying to use a relative date slicer mm, that didn't quite work um, so what he was doing he had an explicit he was explicitly setting those dates every time the, the date the report refreshed and he was like this is just a pain in the posterior ha <laughs> you guys thought i was gonna say something else and so um i came up with a uh, i think it's a pretty decent solution along with another guy on our team we came up with a decent solution and i want to share with you guys okay okay so you guys know how i do Instead of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop. All right, take this for example. So I have two, take a peek right here. So I have two uh, fact tables. So this is what the model looks like. I have a calendar table in the middle and it's connecting both my projected sales table and my actual sales table, all right? And then um, they created a line graph. Let's just start from scratch. Let me show you what he did. So created a line graph. So we're gonna create a line graph that shows month year. So I get this month year right here, make it a line graph or let's see what's the actual a area chart let's make it an area chart all right and then what i'm going to do is add sales amount this is what i'm currently selling this is comparing this year and last year all right and then i'm going to add my projected sales and they all work great based on that one calendar table because there's a relationship between the two hang on make sure that element is selected because i want this all on the same line graph okay so now if i scroll over you can see right the last day that we have data is march and so we want to go back 12 months and then we want to go forward 12 months so he said patrick how do you do this and i was like all right well somebody called me out about not using the relative date slicer relative date filter um before and i said well let's look at the relative date filter so we drug that down into the, the filter for this page and i said okay let's change this to relative date filtering and um, you can say is in the last calendar months. Yeah, the last 12 calendar months apply, All right? So that takes me, you know, to where I think I wanna go or maybe let's say just the last 12 months. Yeah, yeah, there we go, right? Um, not quite what I'm looking for, but that's what I got, okay? And so that didn't quite work because I needed to go forward as much as I can also. And so what he was doing, let me show you actually what he was doing. So he took it, he brought the date here again. And so instead of using relative, he went to advance and he said, okay, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, is it after, right? 12 months ago, three, one two oh one eight and i'm gonna say is on or before let's see three thirty one two oh two oh right and i click apply and there's my data that this is exactly what he wanted to graph but think about this and he said patrick think about this whenever we run our data refresh what do we have to do we have to come in and explicitly change those date filters and i was like whoo that's not very efficient. He goes, that's not very efficient. He said, you're not lazy, you're just what? Efficient, I was like, yes. And so he said, and we have about five or six reports every month, I have to go in and change this and redeploy the reports before we do our refresh. So when our end users, our consumers of these reports take a peek, right, it's set properly. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way. He was like, yeah, show me. And I was like, okay, let me show you something. Okay, so let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this, right? And so what I did was, I was like, what you can do is, let's take a look at your date table. 
And what we really want is we only want to get 12 months prior and 12 months after, all right? So we can use a little DAX to do this. And let me show you what I did. So yes, I'm gonna try to write this out and you guys, uh, I'm gonna try to do a live demo. So I'm gonna create a new column, a calculated column, get some space here. I'm gonna call this 24 month reporting equals. And then I'm gonna give me some space, shift enter, will give me new lines in this little query editor. I'm gonna say far last date. So we'll call it max date. Let's call it max date equals uh, max. And then we're gonna find the order date in that table because he said, hey, in our actual sales, where our actual sales happen, we wanna get the maximum date from that table. It's all right, we'll get the maximum date for that table. Perfect. And then I did a little debugging. You guys remember I did a video back with Marco a while ago saying debugging DAX, right? We're debugging DAX with variables. And so I'm gonna say return. And then what I'm gonna do is just let me see what this is. So this should be March 2000 something, I think 19, right? So we go ahead and do that. Take a peek. Perfect. March 2019. And when I compare the max date to the current days in my date table, right? I want to get a difference between the two. There's a wonderful function, right? Called date diff. Really easy. So the first date that you set is a start date, which will be the date in my, my date table, my calendar table. Sorry. Let's do this. There we go. Right. And then what we want to do, the interval is month because we're just looking for minus 12 months and plus 12, one, right? Negative 12 to 12. That's the range we want, right? So then we're going to say month and let's see what we get returned here, right? And we could stop. We could actually stop here. And then what he could do is go and set, you know, set that value just for, you know, things between negative 12. You can see between negative 12 all the way up to 12. We could have stopped and did that. And that would have worked just perfectly, but that's just not enough for me. That's too much to set, too many clicks, right? And just click one thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is put an if around this. We're gonna say if, right, this is in, and there's a, a table function that'll generate a series for us. So from negative 12 to 12, increment by one. If it's in that, return a one. Otherwise, return a zero. Oh, so nice, right? DAX is so great. I'm gonna click my check here. Now, let's take a peek. And we're on, we only want, we're just gonna filter this down and look at those that have one in it. And so that, these are the dates we want, right? These are the dates we want. So let's remove this filter. And now, instead of him explicitly setting those dates every time we can use this calculated column that every time our data refreshes the date table will refresh and then it'll dynamically adjust so check it out so now i'm going to use this 24 month reporting i'm going to add it on my filters page go to basic filtering make it a one and look at there look at that march march last date so he's like patrick i get it but let's see this working for real. So let's simulate a load. So I'm gonna simulate a load here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my last date from March to April. So I'm gonna just run a quick query over here in Management Studio. I just ran our data warehouse load, just like that. And I'm gonna refresh the data. And so what we should see on our ends now are April, April, and my last point should become April. So we're gonna refresh the data. Let's cross our fingers, cross our toes, get excited. Bam, April, 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 just like that. It just works. What do you guys think? So I know there's a lot of other ways you probably can think of doing this with DAX. I know, I know. Please don't leave that in the comments below. This is just one way you can solve it. With DAX, you can solve it. And with Power BI Desktop, you can solve it lots of uh, other ways. But if you do have questions, if you do have comments, you guys know what to do. Post it in the comments below. This is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel. Hit that subscribe button. And if you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.